And so we've been talking about the general concept of uh, blogging, and we're going to get hands-on. We're going to talk about creating a blog and actually writing blog posts. Um, we're going to talk about the how and then the what uh, a little bit later, what to write. Um, we're going to talk about how to write it, what to write a little bit later. And so the idea, again, like I said, we're going to talk about WordPress, which has got the biggest market share. Uh, and the, the two sites that I showed you here and others that I could show you, they're all WordPress because nowadays that's what my company usually does. We make a WordPress website. We used to make, a, make it the traditional way, which was Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver was the classic way to make websites. It's very powerful software. But then at a certain point, it was limited in that the user, the, the client, uh, had us make them a website. And then they would ask, can you change this? Can you change that? And we'd change it. And then eventually, they wanted to make more changes. And they'd say, can we change it? And we say, yeah, you can change it. Just use Dreamweaver and change your site, and you got it. And say, what's Dreamweaver? So Dreamweaver was specialized software to edit the websites. Um, and let's say they did buy Dreamweaver, because Dreamweaver is not free, it's a few hundred dollars. Uh, you bought Dreamweaver, you learned how to use it, and then now you had to take care of editing your, your own site. And Dreamweaver is very powerful, but in a sense could be too powerful, in that you could break your whole site if you're editing the code of the site, and you mistype the code, then the whole site breaks. Um, Dreamweaver was also limited for us in that clients would ask, can you add the ability for people to comment on the website? Can you add the ability for people to buy stuff on the website? And all these extra features, these advanced features that nowadays are sort of given, they're sort of a given, but seven, eight, ten years ago, they weren't as common. And so eventually we reached the limitations of what we could do well with Dreamweaver, and then we moved over to WordPress. So that one, out of the box, will let the user edit their own website for free. It will shield them from some of the dangerous aspects of editing your own website so that they don't break it. You can set user accounts and user roles so that a person only edits what they're allowed to edit. Uh, you can add commenting features easily with the click of a button. You can add shopping cart features and slideshows and all this advanced stuff. And then that's why nowadays we do WordPress. So we're going to talk then about creating a WordPress site. If you already have a website, um, you still might want to create this free WordPress site. If you've already got a WordPress site, you can use it, or again, you might want to create this free one because then you can learn maybe a couple new things. And if you make mistakes, it's okay. It's not on your real website. Um, let's do this. If you don't have your web browser open, go ahead and open your web browser and let's go to wordpress.org. O-R-G. Wordpress.org. Wordpress.org is the organization aspect of WordPress. Basically what's on this website is the manual what is WordPress? How to use WordPress? How do I learn about WordPress? How do I get help for WordPress? Because you can go here and go to support, and there will be documentation, there will be forums, people answering questions about WordPress for free. All of this here is for free. It's the manual, it's the frequently asked questions about WordPress, and it's also the place where you would download the WordPress software. Right here, download WordPress 4.3.1. Now, we're not going to download it. It's not the same sort of software. For example, you, you install Office on your computer and then you use it on your computer. Or you install what other software? GarageBand or Photoshop or any traditional, traditional software. You, you download it or you put in the CD and you install it and you use that software on that computer. That's traditional software. Modern software, especially for web design, is not like that. You don't download this and install it on your own computer. This gets installed on your web server. This is a discussion we'll get into a little bit later, but 
this is basically your piece of the internet, your .com, your .org, .biz, whatever, victor.com. I don't have victor.com, but assuming this was mine, this is where I would install WordPress, or on my website, uh, victorswebdesign.com. On my server, I would install WordPress. We'll talk about how to get a server and all of that and how much it costs, because that's not free. We'll talk about that later. But the point is, at wordpress.org, you, you get support, you read the documentation, you learn about WordPress, you download the software, but you don't use WordPress here. You, you learn about it, you take the survey, you buy their t-shirt, their etc. This is just more for information and for tech support and such. Instead, we'll go to wordpress.com. WordPress.com is also affiliated with the main WordPress company. The parent company actually is called Automatic. The Automatic company, they manage WordPress.org and .com and the software. And at WordPress.com, we've got Create Your New Website for Free. WordPress.com is the best place for your personal or business site. So this is the place where you would go to create a website or start a blog or read WordPress blogs for free. Easy to use, get your own .com, etc. Oh, they say 25%. WordPress powers 25% of the internet. So lots and lots of traffic. So that's the big difference. WordPress.org is the information site. is where you read about WordPress, learn about WordPress, and get the software. WordPress.com is where you create a website. But there's a there's a couple of downsides. At WordPress.com, one of the downsides is you're going to get a website that is that the address is victor.wordpress.com instead of victor.com. Now you can get victor.com from WordPress. That's not free. I believe it's about $25 a year for that name. So if you want victor.com and you buy it from them, it's not going to be free. Uh, if you don't want to buy that, you'll get the free WordPress, victor.wordpress.com. And that's what we're going to do together. We're going to create a free site here. Again, if you've already got a WordPress site somewhere, you can use it. Or you can just use this free one, learn about it, and then delete it later, if you'd like, or, or keep it, or put it private, or whatever. And they also sell other aspects. They, they sell these other features that they'll show later. And honestly, I don't recommend to buy anything at WordPress.com. I don't recommend the domain name or the hosting provider or anything that they sell. I don't recommend it because it's not as full-featured as getting it through the .org. The .org has some features that are active that are not active on the .com. Uh, such as plugins. Plugins are extra, like mini apps, to enhance WordPress. Plugins by default are not, and I mean by default for free, plugins are not available on WordPress.com because plugins are often created from by other companies, third-party companies. WordPress is cool because it's open source, meaning it's free software and it's out there for people to use and to enhance and so forth. And so people create plugins, people create these extra features. Someone creates a cool little slideshow. Someone creates the ability for you to chat on your website and then they give it out for free or sell it. But those plugins come from other companies besides the WordPress parent company. Therefore, WordPress doesn't want to tech support that. They don't want to get into the business of tech supporting someone else's software. So there's no plugins on WordPress.com. But you can have as many plugins as you want on WordPress.org. So if you're trying to do an e-commerce website, you might be really, really limited on WordPress.com. We're not going to focus on e-commerce in this class, we're going to focus on blogging. So this will work just fine. 
But if you take some of my other classes, like my e-commerce class, we talk about using the .org. We talk about creating the full-featured WordPress site with all of its powers and features and headaches. But this one is training wheels, and that'll be fine for us. This is what we need to create a blog so that we can talk about the concepts of writing optimized blog posts and sharing on social media and such all for free. And we can delete it later if you don't want, if you don't want it anymore. So that's your choice right now, to create a brand new one like I'm about to do, or to use your existing one. I recommend to create this free one, and you can delete it later. Yes? Um, you're not going to be able to connect them exactly how you think. You will be able to link them, but you're not really going to be able to integrate them. Um, doesn't quite matter. I would stick with, with your Squarespace if you're happy with it. It has the ability to, to blog and such, and the concepts of our blogging will apply. It's just that when I say, let's click on this and let's do that, it'll be different on yours. Okay. So it, it's up to you, but might as well create this. It's going to be free, and then you can apply these concepts on your own site. Okay. okay. Yep. You might want to create one here, and then, and then you'll apply that to Squarespace later. So let's do this then. Let's go to WordPress.com and let's click the Create Website button. At the top, so your screen hopefully will look just about the same as mine. Sometimes things are slightly different. If they're different, raise your hand and. We'll see what's going on. But I see step one of four. Let's get started. Choose a theme. You can always switch it later. This is a this is a cool thing about these modern website builders, Squarespace, WordPress, Joomla, etc. You can switch the design relatively easily. On classic web design like Dreamweaver and such, it was really difficult to change from one design to another. In a modern website software like WordPress, I might have the boardwalk design, the word the boardwalk theme for a few months and then switch it to the Edmund theme later, or this one or this one. And your content basically migrates over to the new design relatively easily, and you've got a brand new looking website. But that really doesn't matter in terms of SEO. This is not what I'm talking about, about in updating your website. I'm talking about the content of your website. Visually, there's some importance there, more for user experience and keeping them happy and coming back. But really, the design of your site changing that once a month and such, it's not going to help your SEO. The content, changing your content, is what's going to help. So any theme that you see here should be okay. Um, if you don't see any that look exactly like mine, that's okay. But I'm going to choose this one that, looks, that says Minnow. If you don't see Minnow, maybe go to page two. But if you don't see it, don't worry. Just choose any one. I'm going to choose, if you see it, Minnow. Step two, let's find a domain. Choose a custom domain or a free .wordpress.com. So here, this would be your domain name, your URL, the address of your website. So let's say I want a website that I always make up this business in my classes, Victor's Bakery. I want a bakery. I want a website for my bakery. So it's telling me Victor's Bakery is already taken. But I can go with Victor's Bakery site.wordpress.com and it's free. Or they say, why not pay for Victor's Bakery.com $18 a year? Or Victor's Bakery.net $18 a year. And that's not that pricey in the grand scheme of things, but it is a little pricey compared to other companies that we'll talk about later. You can get this same name at other companies. For like twelve dollars, ten dollars, they've got sales on other websites like five dollars, etc. So this is one of the things that again, I'm I, I, I'm not I'm not going to pay for this. Yes. You're just paying for the domain name. We're not paying for anything. No, but if we chose that, just so the domain. Just the domain. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't have to pay for anything. And if you didn't get your perfect name, try to choose another name. It might have already been taken. 
And this is always the angst that we have when we try to, to claim our domain name or our Twitter name or our Facebook name. Someone might have taken it. And I'm going to tell you regarding SEO, it doesn't matter. It used to matter several years ago in the ancient, in the ancient days, five years ago, of the internet. It used to matter that your domain name had your keywords, for example. If you had aluminumsightinginstallers.com, that was gold. But it doesn't matter anymore if you've got um, EIP, right, the initials. That's, a, that's the same. That's fine. The name, the domain name doesn't matter as much anymore to SEO because it's about the content. So if you're trying to fit in your keywords in your disc in your in your address there, and that causes a 30 character long address, that's not gonna help you. That might actually hurt you. Because that's what spammers do. Spammers make up these domain names with all these keywords. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the search engines nowadays operate under guilty until proven innocent. Shoot first, ask questions later. Um, and uh, guilty by association. So if you are engaging in practices on purpose or on accident that seem spammy, you will be marked as a spammer, even though you're not a spammer. I trust you. But Google doesn't. Bing doesn't. Yahoo doesn't. They are guilty until proven innocent because there's so many abusive websites out there that it's easier to mark the abusive ones, even slightly abusive, mark them as abusive rather than giving the benefit of the doubt because it would make way too many spam sites legitimate. If I'm trying to fit the original Victor's Bakery San Diego.com spam, um, sounds kind of harsh, but that's what the search engines are doing to stop the spam. So any name here really will work because before you heard about it, before it entered our lives so deeply, what the heck is a Facebook? Before it entered our lives, what's a Twitter? What's a Pinterest? Etc., etc., etc. What's a Flickr? What's a Behance? You know, all of these websites out there. What do they mean? The name doesn't matter, but they've created content out there that when someone searches for web design portfolios, the Behance sites show up. Behance is a website where people show off their graphic design portfolios to get a job. You may not have heard about that, you may not care about that, but people out there, millions of people care about that. People out there are trying to get jobs as web designers. Get an account at Behance, get found, get a job. Maybe recruiters are looking for people's graphic design portfolios, they're, they know where to look. Even if they don't know where to look, they're going to look up the best graphic design portfolios of 2015. And because of all of the content that is produced on that site, by people, people get found. So the, sh the point is the name doesn't matter like it used to. Don't beat yourself up trying to get the perfect name because your content is what's going to get you noticed by the search engines and people. I'm going to choose Victor's Bakery site WordPress. Fine. I can change it later or I can delete it. Step three or four. Pick a plan that's right for you. Free and not free. And it's free for life. Get a free blog slash website. Again, the limitation is we can't use plugins. And plugins are very important. They open up the world of um, just all of these great enhancements, but they're not available. I don't know that if in the paid versions plugins are still available. I don't care. I'm not going to recommend anyway for you to buy a WordPress account. Later on, we'll talk about Bluehost, GoDaddy, HostMonster, etc., etc., etc. I'm going to talk about providers that I would recommend that my company has dealt with. I've never done a website for a client at WordPress.com. I don't have the experience. I can't tell you how great it is or not by paying the 99 a year or the 300 a year. I think these prices are highly inflated. For $300 a year, you can get five years of service at Bluehost, GoDaddy, etc. with more features. This is training wheels. It's going to work great for a lot of people, uh, but probably not so good for you. And it's kind of pricey because that's 
$20 for the name and then $99, $20 per year for the name and $100 for the, for the, uh, for the server and other features. And I think these are way too expensive. So we'll go with the free one. <coughs> this is going to ask for an email account so that in case if you forget your password and that sort of thing, it can retrieve it. And then also so that you can it verifies that you're a real person. So go ahead and add your email address. And the username, they don't make it so uh, so obvious, unfortunately. But the username is um, is is related to that address we made previously. Remember, I chose Victor's Bakery website dot wordpress dot com. Um, the point here is this username, I would just type the same name that you used when you created the website. So it was Victor's Bakery website, in my case. So if you're trying to use a username that's already been taken, it's been taken. The thing that's a little confusing is that we can create a WordPress.com account and then we can create as many blogs as we want. With this account, with this username, I can create victorsbakery.wordpress.com, victorsdogwalking.wordpress.com, victorswebdesign.wordpress.com. So I can create as many websites, many blogs as I want with this one account. Add a password. Add a password and make sure all the boxes are green and then click Save Settings. Some of the features that we have here will, in WordPress.com will not fully be active until you verify your email address. Now, I made up that email address, so I'm not going to be able to verify it. But uh, some of the features might not be active until you verify. You don't need to verify right now. We'll have a break later. But remember about verification. So was everyone able to get to this screen here about thanks for signing up? Anyone need a little help? Yes. It's not liking your password? It, you might have used this email previously to create a WordPress site. So if you're on this screen here, as I said, uh, WordPress.com uh, lets you create multiple sites, multiple blogs, multiple websites. So a little confusing thing is that let's say that you go home and you want to keep doing this. You got excited and you want to keep using WordPress. So let's say you go home and you open up your web browser 
and you go to wordpress.com at home and then instead of create you're going to log in so when you log in you'll get the screen that you'll get a screen that looks like what kind of kind of what we're looking at you'll get the screen where you've got my site reader create a new post your information and notifications so the confusing thing is that you log into wordpress.com and and you don't see your your blog right away you see other things and so what you need to remember is you want to click at the top left my site because you can use wordpress.com to create your own websites to create your own blogs and publish content and you can also use it to read other people's blogs and follow other people's blogs and subscribe and you know re uh, keep up on the on, on articles and so forth well the wordpress.com uh, site is almost also like a social network people create accounts here post content share like comment uh, it's all WordPress behind the scenes so when you go home you want to log in and click my site so that you come over to to your um, to your site viewer right here and they changed this recently or, or maybe because of my settings but do you see on the left side you have some some menu items view site stats etc um, does anyone see within their settings somewhere something that says something like uh, admin WP admin raise your hand if you do see admin not too many people so I think they might have they might have changed this the point is that like I said wordpress.com is training wheels and that's not bad we need to we need to learn how to ride the bike but this this is to me training wheels for training wheels this my site thing here has a way to create blog posts and so forth relatively easily but whenever you you read any books or tutorials on WordPress they're never talking about this they're talking about the dashboard they're talking about the more powerful full featured version of WordPress and this again is training wheels for training wheels so I think what we need to do if you see if you see this some of you might see a button that says WP admin click it if you see it if you don't see it like I don't I think because I need to verify my email and I'll do it later I think what we the way we can do it is click on view site view site Site admin under meta. Yeah, that depends on the theme. My theme doesn't show that site admin. Uh, so yeah, this is annoying. This is going to be a little different for everyone. So let's do this. Um, when you clicked visit site or view site, do you see up on your address? It's got your address, the name of your site. WordPress.com. Does everyone see that? What you want to do at, up at the top then, on this address, at the very end of the address, add slash wp-admin. This should force us into the admin screen. Again, uh, I'm not seeing this admin screen myself. You might see it. You do want to click on it, but this is another way to force us to go into it. It's the name of your website, slash wp-admin. So Victor's Bakery site wordpress.com slash wp-admin. Your website, obviously, not mine, your website. Type that and press enter. This is what I want to see, the dashboard. So let's pause here. Is everyone looking at the dashboard?
second dimension of the two is the other one. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets an extremely easy yeah. down the back. Okay, so um, here is our dashboard. If you've never used WordPress before, um, notice the address. It's the name of my website slash WP admin. When you, as I said, when you log into WordPress.com at home, it may not show you that right away, unfortunately. So I had to do that extra, extra step under my site, view site, and type the address. But anyway, here under the dashboard, we have a variety of, of links. We will not uh, go into all of these screens here. I'm going to show you um, maybe two, maybe three screens that I would say are important regarding blogging and SEO. And then we'll get to actually writing blogs and so forth, because um, it's, it's, it's useful to see these settings. And again, if you have something else like Wix, you're going to have similar settings, but they're going to be a little bit different. So here in the dashboard at the very bottom left, we have settings. If you hover over settings, you see a bunch of sub-settings. Uh, let's look at settings general. So the general settings. At the moment, the title of my website is the same name as the username and such, which is not so good for SEO. Search engines 
analyze every aspect of our website, even those that we don't even think it's analyzing. And so, for example, this title is not a good title. First of all, the search engines are going to see it as one word because there's no spaces. It's going to see it as Victor's Bakery site. That's not a real word. Victor's space bakery is our real words. And, and also, these are not spelled properly. There's no apostrophe and such. So this is not good SEO. If your title is a truncated name like this, which most likely it is, we want the name, the full name of your site, Victor's Bakery, and spelled in the way, human readable, spelled in the way that people will see it. Because modern SEO, SEO is changing all the time, that's why I say modern SEO, because techniques that used to work two years ago maybe don't work anymore, actually hurt you, perhaps. Modern SEO, which is what my company does and what I teach in classes, is about what will help people find you more than what tricks can I do for the search engine to find me. It's what can I do for people to find me. So the search engines define these tricks or techniques and um, in my SEO class we go into more detail there. But one of them is always think about writing your content in terms about people reading this or looking for this or finding it. Not really in what can I do to please the search engines, what can I do for people? So Victor's Bakery. Um, we've then got a tagline, which is also useful, because if I've got a, a domain name, a website, PMD Interactive, I don't know what they're about. If you never met me and you saw that name somewhere, you wouldn't really know what it's about. The name is esoteric. You don't know what it means. So therefore, this tagline is highly important to say, San Diego based web designers specializing in small businesses. So this tagline, the search engines see that as well. People will see that. And this then explains what this company does. So if your name is one of these esoteric names that people don't know what it means off the bat, Definitely use your t tagline here, one sentence to explain what your website is about. The length of these do matter because you can't write a whole essay in them. It's a good idea to keep the length of this as big as that box. I went out a little bit further, that's okay, but I wouldn't really go on and on and on there to fit in as many keywords as I could. That's keyword stuffing and the search engines don't like that. So you want to use these boxes judiciously, but you do want to explain what your website is about. Question? Does that have to be um, grammatically correct? Should there be a period at the end of that? Uh, on that one, I would say grammatically correct internally, but it doesn't need the period. It doesn't need the period. Okay, I don't know if it had to have perfect syntax. It does, but it doesn't need the period there, which which would be perfect syntax. So no, it doesn't need it doesn't need it there. But I would you know, dashes and apostrophes and commas and proper spelling, yes, but it doesn't need a period at the end. Yes? Why did you put a dash after San Diego? San Diego based, that's a word. It's based in San Diego. Yes. Um, and so... No, because I mean South Dakota. <laughs> so you do want to be specific. Um, you know, does it stand for super duper? We don't know. So we want to be specific. Um, and, and as I said, you can go over a little bit past the edge of the box. You know, business went over the edge. And that's okay. But I wouldn't write three sentences here. One sentence is, is good. And this is the, then the larger discussion in the other class about what is your your brand strategy and your marketing profile and your keywords and the long tail keywords that's the other class where we go into more detail in short here your title make sure it's the, the full name of your company within the boundaries of the box and your tagline is one sentence that explains your company especially if your name on its own doesn't make sense if I'm Victor's Bakery 
the name makes sense. So I can I can use the name here, for example, gluten free baked goods made with love. It doesn't have to be always thinking in terms keywords, 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 marketing, marketing robotically. Because it's for also the people primarily. So here it's got the keywords of gluten free. People are going to search for that. Baked goods, bakery, made with love. No one's going to search that, really. But when they see your results pop up on a page of 10 results out of a million, that might resonate with someone. That's the marketing aspect of things. Marketing, advertising, reaching an audience. We talk about it in the other class. So uh, this would be a perfectly great tagline because it tells people, they already know what my company is by the name because it's pretty literal. Then I have a keyword here, gluten-free, and then reaching out pe to people that care a little bit about that. Friendliness, uh, a little bit of irreverence and such. It's an art and a science time zone. This is the wrong time zone. We're not in London. We are in California, which is negative 8. Or we can change it to Los Angeles. It also lists it in terms of world cities, but this is a huge list. So if you want Los Angeles, what I would recommend is click on the box and start typing LOS. You get Los Angeles. Or put it on UTC minus 8. You can click on the box. It says in the drop down. Yeah, click on the box and then start typing LOS. Date format you can change if you'd like. I'm going to leave that alone. Time format you can change if you'd like. I'll leave that alone. The week starts on, you can change that if you'd like, doesn't matter. And then language. The language your, your blog is primarily written in. If you're trying to reach an audience of English speakers, there's that setting. If you're trying to reach an audience of um, Czech speech, uh, speakers, there it is there. If you're trying to uh, speak, uh, reach an audience of German speakers, there it is right there. This is what audience you're trying to reach. If you'd like to change the interface so that this is in Spanish or in Italian, that's a different screen. You can click there on that setting. But this is the audience you're trying to reach. You cannot, unfortunately, choose more than one language. It's one language. When you make uh, any changes here, you probably have made a change. Uh, you can click Save in the corner on the bottom. And then on the top right corner, I forgot to mention this one, uh, but if you have an icon or a logo for your business, for your website, you can you can add your logo here and then you, you'll have a logo attached to your website for more branding, for more marketing to be memorable. So any questions on this screen? Uh, let's look at the reading screen. You see general writing, reading. Let's look at reading. There's some good settings here. We won't be able to do it at the moment, but at the at this point, our WordPress site on the front page on the home screen, it will automatically display our latest posts, like a classic blog. We have the ability also to set a static home page. So let me show you here. On my personal blog, which I need to update, um, I write about one of my hobbies, which is comic books. So this particular blog is a WordPress blog and it's in the classic style in that the latest blog post goes on top of the earlier blog post. 
See, this one is from July, and this one is from May, and then this one is from January, and then we go older. So this is the classic blog post. It's going to push the old stuff down, and that's what our WordPress is saying right here. Your latest post. The home page will look like, not that it'll look like, it'll behave like my example. It's going to put your latest blog posts first. Well, let me show you another example of a client. This is another client that we have, another restaurant. Usually I make people pretty hungry in my classes because all our clients are restaurants. But this one's also a WordPress site. This one doesn't have any blogs. Uh, they're doing well without blogging, but they are also engaging in social media. They're engaging in YouTube. They're engaging in print. So a lot of pieces to the puzzle to, for traffic. So um, this particular one is known as the static homepage. On the homepage, there is this slideshow that changes, but that, that's not what it's meant by static or dynamic. Static is if, if this had a blog, it's not showing up on the home page. It would show up on its own blog section. It doesn't even have a blog, and that's fine. So this is a static home page. That's what this setting is saying here. Let's put a static home page. But we won't be able to do it yet because it says, okay, if you've got a static home page, what page will we show on the home page? We have an about page, but we don't have a home page. So this one over here has a home page placeholder and therefore we can't set this yet. We'll create a home page placeholder later. And then we can put the blog posts in a blog page place, placeholder, but we don't have that either. So we'll have to keep it here as is, but later we'll talk, we can talk about creating this kind of static page. And the third kind is the one that I showed earlier of a Kias Texcoco. That one is hybrid. It has static home page in that it's got a slideshow and a call to action and such, but it doesn't change mostly. But it does have a blog. So it's got both blog and static. And that would also be setting it up like this, but we need to set front page placeholder and posts placeholder. Question. So that blog you have on your home, home page you just showed us, is mm -hmm. that, that's just a separate widget in a, in a particular frame? or On my home page here? Well, the one you were showing us, that Texcoco? Yeah, the, the blog yes. you have to the right. Yes, that would that, be a that would be a widget. When we talk about widgets, okay. that'll make sense. But yes, this is a widget in that the main blog doesn't take over the home page. Correct. It's a little piece. Okay. We'll be able to see how to do that later. So in that case, this is defined as a static site. It's still with, static. With, oh, with, with, okay. Mm -hmm. So at the moment we can't select static. We'll leave it on latest. We'll get back to that. And then we've got these options about how many blogs should we show it at a time, 10 at a time, 2 at a time, 7 at a time, it doesn't matter. But if we think about it in terms of SEO, it might matter in that if we've got, let's say, 10 at a time, that could hurt our SEO if it slows down our site. If you've got 10 blog posts and each one has a bunch of pictures and maybe videos, and 10 of them have to load at a time, that could slow down your site. And that could then hurt your SEO. By default, when you make a blog post and you wrote 500 words, all 500 words will show up. We're going to learn about, let's show a little teaser and read more. That's not by default. We have to set that. That's going to be better. We don't want to show 500 words here, and 700 words here, and 200 words there. That's going to be lots of content. People are going to see it as a big wall of, of text and not really, not really read it. It's not going to help you out. Instead, we want to tease people, and if they're interested in Johnny Quest number 16, maybe they will click to read it or watch the video. We'll see how to do that later. So that's here. If you're showing too much content on the home page, that could slow you down 
could hurt your SEO. You can put whatever you want there, but I think five is a good medium. Not too much content, not too little content. It'll show five posts, and then it'll automatically do page two, page three, page four. Another good thing about using something like WordPress, it'll automatically do pagination. It'll make more pages for you. Syndication feeds and article and feed are both related. People will be able to subscribe to your blog very easily. And they will get an email about your latest blog post. In that email, would you like to send them the whole post, the whole article, or just a summary? If you send them the whole text, they have little incentive to come back to your website. If you send them a summary, that's a teaser, and if they're interested, they'll come back to read it on your website. Question. So the summary is set by you, or WordPress knows to cut it off after the first four seconds? Uh, it is based on you. When we create a post a little bit later, we're going to see a box in there that we can write the summary. So we can craft that how we want. So the point of this is, let me back up to other larger concepts. You take the social media class, for example. We learn about Twitter, Pinterest, etc. People ask me, well, this is amazing. I can reach an audience on Facebook. I can reach an audience on Pinterest. Do I even need a website? Usually the answer is yes. Because on Pinterest, on Twitter, on Facebook, etc., you cannot usually accomplish your ultimate goal. Your ultimate goal is your ultimate goal. What are you trying to accomplish? Texcoco is trying to sell tacos. You can't sell a taco through a tweet. You sell it on the website. I'm trying to get people to hire me uh, to do paintings. I can't do that on Pinterest. I do it on my website. I'm trying to gain donations. I can't do that on Facebook. I do it on my website. So your ultimate goal, whatever you're trying to do, um, usually you can accomplish it on your website because it's your website. You've set it up how you want. Most social networks will not let you do some of these things such as gain, uh, gain uh, subscribers to your newsletter, get uh, donations to your nonprofit, buy your products. They're mostly a marketing vehicle on your website is where you're going to complete that goal. Same thing here. If you give them the whole blog post, they have little incentive to come back to your website to accomplish the goal. Maybe, like this Mexican food restaurant, uh, people are subscribing and they're getting the latest blog post and they're getting hungry. Well, if it only has a summary, they can go back to the website, order now. So that's why I would recommend send a summary. Instead of full text. And instead of sending 10 of the last blog posts at a time, keep it short also because they might feel they might feel spammed. They might feel they're getting too much. So I usually like to keep it relatively low here. Three. You don't want those emails, those notifications to be so much that they overwhelm people and they unsubscribe. So keeping it short like that will send out some teaser content for them to come back to your site where they can read the blog completely, where they can purchase my item, where they can hire me, where they can do whatever, my ultimate goal on my website. Site visibility allows search engines to index my site, discourage them from indexing, or make it private. Why would they default it? Discourage. Do you guys also have default discourage? Mm -hmm. That's pretty odd. Usually it was default allow. I'm not, default not sure. allow. You default allow. Okay. So yeah, good point here. If yours says discourage and you want this to be found by the search engines, that might hurt you. But it says neither of these options block access to your site. Your site will still exist. People can still find it if they bookmarked your address they'll still be able to get back to it. But if you put discouraged search engines, maybe if someone goes to Bing and searches taco shops, maybe they might not find my site. 
But if they bookmarked Victor's Taco Shop, they can still get to it. If you don't want people to see it, maybe it's still a work in progress. Set it to private, and then only certain people can see it. So it's up to you to decide what you want here. If this is just a fake website to learn what you're doing, maybe put it on private. If you do care for this to be visible by the, by the world, potentially, you can put it on either one of these, and allow search engines will make it the most public. Kind of in between, because people can still get to it, they just might not get to it through a search engine. They can just go to the site directly. And I think if we set it on private, I think it's going to deactivate some features like social media. So even, even this might not be the best for the moment. So I'd keep it on discourage, or if you don't care, put it on allow. Uh, this might just be a fake site, doesn't matter, you can delete it. But I think discourage will be okay for us. So let's say we sent out these emails automatically, people subscribed. They get then an email that takes them back to our, a link that takes them back to our website. They read, they read one article. You've probably read various blog posts in your time, and you've read one blog post, the top 10 money-saving tips, and you liked it, and then at the bottom or on the side, there's another article that says top five pitfalls for your IRA. And you read that one. So then at the end of that one, you get other suggestions for other articles that you like, and you keep reading. Then eventually, maybe you you hire them, you send them an email, whatever, the ultimate goal of that website. This is built in here, related posts. The more you write on your WordPress site, it'll then suggest to people, why not read this one? Why not read that one? Keeping them on your site so that they can subscribe, so that they can donate, so that they can hire me, so that they can buy now, whatever. Hide related, show related. I would recommend, it's good for your SEO, show related content. That keeps people on your site longer. The search engines take into account lots of things, such as how long do people stay on your site. If they come to your site and stay on your site for two minutes, consistently, the search engines might say, it's not a good site. People don't care enough about it. I'm not saying two minutes is your goal. I'm just saying, depending on your website, two minutes might be enough. Two minutes might be enough for them to buy your product. Perfect. Two minutes might be too short for them to read your articles. So um, the longer they stay on your site, usually, the better. So keeping them on your site here is good. Show related header, yes. And I would recommend use a large and visually striking layout because the default will look something like this out of the corner of my eye that kind of looks like an ad. We're getting used to ignoring ads. So if you turn on that, it'll show a thumbnail from the post and hopefully you're, you're using good pictures in your post to catch attention. Cats always work. Is that, a, is that an image in the article or is it featured? It's the featured image of the article. Okay, the featured. Yeah, when we create our articles, we'll see we can set that so that it maximum impact. If you don't want any of that, you can turn it off. I don't recommend it. I do recommend you have related posts on and show the, the large layout. Keeping them longer on your site. They should group this option to infinity and beyond. They should group it up here with blog page shows at most. This is saying show five posts at a time. But then, down here, it's saying infinite scroll. Infinite scroll is a modern style of blogs. Let me show you my Tumblr blog. This is just some silly stuff here. vmcapos.tumblr.com So I've got these little animations that I put up. You see that one, you scroll down, you see another one, you scroll down, you see another one, you scroll down, you see another one, another one. Look on the right side of my scroll bar. I keep scrolling, I keep scrolling, I keep seeing stuff, I keep scrolling. I get to the end, and then more stuff appears. And I keep scrolling down, and then at a certain point it runs out. But 
I keep scrolling and it keeps showing me stuff. That's the infinite scroll. It's very popular on Tumblr that you just uh, keep scrolling and scrolling what's next, what's new. Tumblr is a very ADD type of network in that there's something new to keep looking at, just keep scrolling, I like that, click like, etc. Keep going. Tumblr is a bit more, uh, WordPress, uh, in this class we would talk about the differences but we, we're missing that day, but we're talking about, we would talk about the Tumblr, I would call it the short attention span blog, and WordPress is the long attention span blog. Tumblr is where we would not write a whole paragraph of stuff, or two paragraphs. We would usually include a picture, a little bit of text, and that's enough for, for the demographics of Tumblr. WordPress is where I would put a picture or two or three and three paragraphs, etc., etc., etc. Long attention span, WordPress. Short attention span, Tumblr. And they're both useful. They both have large audiences, but it's just more work, more effort. Yes? Is the shorter content in Tumblr affect the ability to put enough keywords in to No, because you can put many keywords there and keywords and hashtags and such are very important on Tumblr. So the short amount of content doesn't matter because then you're, you're using keywords, hashtags. So uh, here's just a bunch of animations that I put up here. Um, and um, this is the infinite scroll. It just goes on and on and there's something new. There's no page 2, page 3, page 4. There's um, infinite scroll. That's what our setting here is saying. And this is kind of funny because up there it says show five at a time. And here it says show them all. Actually, seven at a time. It, it loads itself automatically. So if you don't want the infinite scroll, turn it off, and then the five at a time will take place. Right there, the five at a time now is being ignored because we're saying kind of seven at a time. And you might have a different number there. That depends on your theme. But the infinite scroll will just keep showing more and more stuff. And that's up to you to use it or not. SEO-wise, it doesn't quite matter unless it's affecting the speed of your site. If you're putting a lot of a lot of stuff like this one on on my Tumblr, this is these are all animations. These are all big files and such, and that's okay. Tumblr.com is fast enough that it um, that it's going to show my content fast enough. I'm not worried. If it was my own site, maybe I might be worried about that. Enhanced feeds, don't worry about that. Logged out users, that's fine. A user can follow your blog even when not, without them being logged in. <coughs> if they want to then follow the blog, it'll just ask them to log in. So this is just reminding them, you can follow my blog. If you turn that off, they might not have that reminder and you might be missing out on some traffic. When someone follows your blog or comments, they get these messages. You can change these how you want. Let's save at the bottom. Any changes, uh, any, any questions on this screen? Let's look at a couple more settings, then we'll take a break. Uh, discussion. Don't save that, right? What's that? Those settings and the button. Just in readings. What's the question? Oh, I'm sorry. Did we click save? You definitely want to save because we changed a few things. Yes. Let's go over to discussion. We'll look at a couple settings here. There's a lot of them here, but I'm, I'll mention a couple that I recommend. Um, the ability for people to comment on your site could help your SEO could help your traffic. Um, it's at a transition at the moment. Um, if you read comments on blogs, you might see that they quickly spiral into negativity, especially when they're not moderated, when someone isn't there beating back the trolls and keeping it civil. So by default, unfortunately, maybe, your blog is very open. Anyone can comment. And so there's a setting 
before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. I would recommend you turn that on. Turn on that option. You will get an email, which is right up here. You will get an email <coughs> with a preview of the comment. And in the email itself, you will have approve, deny, spam. There's a pretty good spam filter already in place to take care of the spam, but sometimes something gets through, and before it appears on the site, you'll get an email, and then you can click right on the email and approve it if it's a good one, deny it, or spam it. Spam, obviously, if it's, if it's completely irrelevant spam content, you might want to deny it if it's not that it's spam, but what if it's mean? What if it's putting people down? What if it's annoying? Um, what if that particular person usually writes good stuff, but then they had a bad day and they wrote something negative? That's okay. You can moderate your content. It's your blog. It's your content. You can keep it civil. You can keep it clean. You can do what you want. In a sense, it's your property. You're not going to be infringing on anyone's rights, and don't worry about someone screaming, you're, you're censoring me. I don't care. It's my property. Just like a person screaming at you on your front lawn, you can tell them to get off my property or I'm calling the cops. They can go to the sidewalk where it's public and then the cops will, will get them. But uh, getting yelled at on your own property? You can't do that. It's your property. So, same thing on WordPress. You can moderate and comment and edit and delete people's comments however you want. And so that's why having comments itself might be more of a can of worms than you care to deal with. You might have to be dealing with approving all of these comments that you're getting, and it might be that comments moving forward might not be that relevant to your SEO, because social media is taking such a center stage on a lot of this. So there's no, there's no definitive answer that the search engines will tell us about. Will, will commenting hurt me or help me and how much percentage. Things might change. So keep yourself safe by having manu manually approved comments. And if you decide it's not worth it, I'll keep my conversations on Twitter, you can go right over here. Allow people to post comments on your articles, just turn it off. Don't let comments happen. You can turn this on or off for individual posts if you'd like but the default is let anyone comment. You can turn that off or keep it on, but then have that safety of moderation. And there's other settings here that you can look at. They're pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to move on, but that's the one I recommend for you to turn on. Last one, and then we'll take a break. Sharing. Let's go to sharing. Let's say you designed a really great website, you wrote some gr really great articles, but you, don't, you still don't get any traffic. Maybe you're blogging every week, you're still not getting traffic. It's because still the search engines might not know about you, you might not have any publicity. Social media, publicity, marketing, advertising. If you take the social media class we talk in there about using social media, as a vehicle to gain more traffic. Question there, ladies? So this screen is then to publicize your content. Connect your blog to your social networks and automatically share them with your friends. So that means I've got a website, but I should also have a Facebook, at least, maybe also a Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. And when I post something on my blog, I also want it to get posted on Facebook. I also want, to, want it to get posted on LinkedIn, etc. You can connect all of these and share it from this site over to your, your other networks. Because maybe at the beginning, you don't have much readership on your site, but you do have 20 followers on Twitter. Maybe you do have 30 likes on Facebook. Those are potentially more viewers 
to your blog. So you'll go through the process. It's not complicated, but you need to click and log in, and then it'll connect your site with your social media. And when you post a new article, there'll be an option that says share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, and it automatically goes. Because you should be leveraging also your social media to get you more traffic. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, so when you share on Facebook, or if you click on that, you have to log, put in your login information to Facebook. Or that? Exactly. You have to log in to connect your Facebook account to your site. The other side of that coin is: What if a random person visits my site and really likes my blog posts and wants to share it to their Facebook? That's this next part here: sharing buttons and sharing buttons to allow your visitors to share. So the first part is about you sharing to your social networks. And this part is about letting people themselves share to their social networks, being free advertisers for you, being free cheerleaders for you. So this screen's a little confusing to, to, to look at, but it's got three sections. Available services, enabled, and preview. On every article, It'll, it'll have automatically these buttons here. People will automatically be able to share it to Twitter, to WordPress, Google Plus, Facebook. And you have these to choose from on the first one. And in the center, these are the ones that are active. Let's say I also want to let people email my article to their friends. So from the top, you drag email into the center somewhere. And then at the bottom, that's how it'll show up on an article. And you can arrange them in any order. You might say, well, not, why not add them all? That's good. But if you add them all, you might have a lot of icons down there that, are, uh, that could be distracting. So there's also this section right here about hidden. So let's say I do want to share it over to LinkedIn, but I want to put it over here. And you'll see that a more button shows up. So maybe show the most popular things you networks here, and then they'll have the ability for more networks there. So I would recommend to put it as Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus, and then the other ones tuck them away. They'll still be available. Those are the big ones. In any order you want, of course. But that social media uh, sharing is very useful for you. And then what's the style? Icon and text, icon only. Text only. I wouldn't do text only. It looks kind of sad. Um, you can do icon only. looks nice. Icon and text looks nice. And you can also do, I like this one, official buttons. That'll show you the official buttons from the sites. But the problem will be that if you don't have that many shares on that post, you'll be zero, zero, zero. And that looks sad too. So you might not want to show that you're not getting any traffic yet and keep it on maybe these text buttons, or not text, these uh, icon buttons. And that way people won't know yet that you don't have too much traffic. Because popularity on social media breeds popularity, and no popularity breeds no popularity. So if no one is following you on Twitter, you're not going to get followers. As you build followers, you'll get more followers. As you show that you're popular, that'll help your popularity. But one thing that's annoying is Twitter just recently changed their settings they will no longer show, they will no longer provide a count of tweets. That's pretty annoying. I liked that. I wanted to see how popular was a post and such. They're not going to show that anymore. So everyone's going to have zero on that, even if you do have shares. And you can change the text. It says share this. You can make it say Spread the word.
Would you like to show these buttons on the front page, on posts, pages, media? We'll talk about posts and pages differences later, but these defaults should be okay. Usually people will share a post. They won't really share search results. They won't really share the front page. That's going to be slightly different. Why not media? That's going to depend on the theme. Um, if you have a theme that shows a picture on its own, um, that might be useful to share it. But if your theme doesn't show it, if, if the picture is always attached to an article, then it's not exactly share that media. You're still sharing the whole post. If you've got a Twitter account and you add your Twitter name there, it will automatically add your Twitter name to the tweet. Um, these other ones are fine. Again, they're related to social, they're related to sharing and getting traffic through social media, so they're, they're good. When you make any changes, remember to click Save. there's still a bunch of other settings you can look at on your own. I'm going to finish talking about those settings there. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about brainstorming. So you can decide to um, what you want to do about that. But what we'll do is um, we'll take volunteers. But if you'd like to talk about, tell me about your site to, as a class, We'll brainstorm possible ideas for your blog. I'll tell you about some ideas of possible blog concepts in general. And if you'd like, we can talk about specifics of yours. And I think that's a good exercise that we do because then we give each other ideas. Because yes, every kind of website could have a blog. Every kind of website should have a blog because you're going to put out content. You saw that example of the jeweler, the Mexican food restaurant. If you go to the our portfolio, you'll see other websites with other blogs because that's content. You're going to get burnt out if you don't have a plan. So we're going to develop a plan right after the break. It's 12.02. We'll be back at 12.12 .12 and we'll do that.